Congratulations on Force Majeure. What kind of film is this? It's a tragical comedy, I would say. It's a, it's, it's a comedy about losing face. Uh, it's about humans' extreme fear of losing face on, in front of each other. And it's about a catastrophe that never happens, but emotional roller coaster that is striking the, the characters in the film, I guess. Just in a nutshell, can you just outline briefly the story? It's a, it's a Swedish family that are on ski vacation in the French Alps. And on the second ski day, they are on an outdoor restaurant high up in the mountains. And suddenly they see like an avalanche tumbling down a distant mountainside. And in the beginning, everybody's like, wow, beautiful. Um, but the avalanche cracks up and it gets bigger. And suddenly they are getting uh, quite nervous. And the, and the last thing we see where everything turns white is that the man in the family, Thomas, is running away from the table and leaving his wife and his kids. Uh, but there are actually no catastrophes. It's only the snow smoke that reaches the restaurant. So 20 seconds later, it's a blue sky again, and everybody has to go back to the sea, and Thomas has to go back to his wife and his kids. And that, that's actually the, the, the main setup of the film. He certainly tries to go back to his wife, but mm. a Pandora's box of moral issues um, has yeah. been opened up by this event. Yeah. Definitely, I mean, and I was inspired of an investigation I uh, I, I read uh, uh, or on uh, research about uh, airplane hijackings. And uh, this uh, this research, research, you could tell that the frequency of divorce was extremely high after uh, uh, airplane hijackings. And I would say that this is because you have seen a side of your partner that you don't expect and, and you can't. You can't um, accept that he is acting in, in a certain way or she is acting in a certain way. So the expectations that we have, have on each other uh, and the roles that we are supposed to play as a man or a woman, when, when those roles are not played in, 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 in the way that we expected it, we have a really, really hard time to, to forgive this. And I think this is exactly what happens between Thomas and Ebba. Even though we rationally can say, oh my God, what, what a luck that we are still alive and nothing happened. There are like emotionally scars that are very hard to, to deal with. You, you clearly intend this film to be a conversation starter. I want to know what you want the conversations to be about. Uh, ooh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> maybe about... The, maybe about Come on, the, you're the director, uh, you're the writer. Yeah. Give me a better answer. Sure. But, okay, I can say like this, I, 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 one of the goals with the film was to raise the percentage of divorce in society. <laughs> but, yeah, I want people to think about the roles that we are playing in a, in a nuclear family, the expectations we have on each other. And I think those expectations and those roles as a man uh, or a woman are very limited. And um, so, so I, I need to, that we have to be aware of that those those outside expectations are also um, maybe we haven't chosen to be those people we have, maybe we haven't chosen to be those characters uh, but still it's like we 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 are we are I think we never talk about our culture the western culture as an honor culture we're talking about Muslim culture as an honor culture but we also live in an honor culture it's a problem for Ebba the, the mother in the family when Thomas is acting in an uh, or in an unbrave way um, and, uh, yeah questions between man and woman as, uh, on, on our fear of losing face I guess mm. you, you certainly make the point that inside mm. every civilized man is an ape driven by primal survival <laughs> instincts. Yeah. Now, while the wife certainly blames her husband for this behaviour, I'm keen to know, do you blame him? Uh, no, I don't. But I tend to look at silly behaviour. I, 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 I always take standpoint for the character that, doing, that is doing the wrong thing. I, I was inspired of the captain of Costa Concordia, uh, that that was the first one to abandon the ship, and he he was questioning of his behavior, and he said, "Well, I fell I fell into the lifeboat. That's why I 
why I was the first one to leave the ship. And it was a stupid lie, of course, and it made, made it e- even worse for him. But still, I have, I have um, how do you say, I can look at it from a, from a perspective where, where I understand him because we are so afraid of losing faith so we are, when, we, when we are up to the point when we are uh, losing faith, we are, we are doing really, really stupid things. So I don't blame him at all, and I definitely, definitely don't blame him when survival instinct is in in the picture, and mm. and you are struck by survival instinct. You are not doing any rational uh, decisions anymore. Now I'm aware of what inspired the story initially about an incident mm. that happened to your friends, but I'm also mm. interested to know while you were developing the film whether you reflected on that episode of Seinfeld where George Costanza pushes Mm. aside old women and little kids in order to... (laughs) (laughs) Was that... (laughs) Please be honest, was that kind of running through your mind as you were making this movie? No, but I I haven't seen that episode, but a lot of people have told me about that. Okay. But I think it it, it has the same, exact same setup. And um, I think we're... We have just treated it in in two different ways because yeah, I wanted to go in also to the more how do you say serious questions about this and and how it really really affects like the the, the family structure and stuff like that. But I mean, it, it's a great idea. And, uh, <laughs> just very quickly, about this episode. So, just very quickly, do you know of the German film The Loneliest Planet by Julia Loch- Lochte? That, that, that's, that's the next film they always take up. After they have been talking about uh, the Costanza sure. in Seinfeld, they, they talk about this movie. But yeah, I have been heard about that, but I haven't seen the moment. But that's also a brilliant moment, I think, when, when he's trying to hide behind his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. The film features very effective use of stillness and long takes. Very often when you go to the uh, cinema or when you're watching things on TV, they don't stay long enough in the scenes. They are making them too efficient. And um, I wanted to combine the way in this film where I have like the Vivaldi parts when we are bringing up the tempo and making it very dynamic and then go deep, deep into uh, embarrassing situations and awkward situations when there's silence for like five seconds and people don't know what to say. Uh, so I think, uh, yeah, I think, I, I really think that long takes can do something physical with, uh, with the audience. You're, you're feeling the whole scene in the body. And uh, uh, I have used this in almost all my films. The so film is Sweden's entry for the best uh, foreign film Oscar. This obviously means that you want a global platform. Is there a particular message that you want to impart from that platform? <laughs> no, but I, I think that a lot of my films are dealing with stereotypes that uh, American movies have brought up. I mean, the stereotype about the man as a hero, the woman as a sex object, the stereotype image of uh, criminality and robberies and stuff like that. Stereotypes about skin color, for an example. My previous film play was dealing with skin color. So, yeah, all of my films is in some way trying to deal with, with subjects and topics that media have created and that we have to rethink about, that we have to see in which way those the images have, have created prejudice in, in society and so on. Now, Ruben, what are you going to do if the Americans come along with a big, <laughs> juicy offer to buy the rights of the film so they can remake it? What will <laughs> you say? Uh, that, that is uh, already happening. So we, we will say, yes, go, go ahead, do it. Tell me a bit about that. What is the what is the process, and what is your reaction to the Americans taking the film and remaking it? Obviously, for a bigger audience, do you ensure that you will be part of the creative process in adapting it, or do you just basically take the huge bags of money, step back, and let them do their thing? Well, first of all, I want to see their huge bags of money. I haven't seen them yet. I'm not very sure that they exist. 
that much that we think in the in the uh, Hollywood the film industry. But I I will not get into the process of making the film, not at all. In that case, I will leave it just to to them to do what uh, what they want with it, uh, and I will be focusing on next project. All right. But, uh, yeah. And can I ask, what is the upside of having a film remade by Americans? We often hear a lot of negative things about it, but obviously filmmakers wouldn't be keen on it, um, otherwise they wouldn't sign over the rights. What is the advantage for you? Uh, well, I, I'm not 100% sure yet. I don't know what, what, what will happen and if it will be materialized, I will see. But I guess it will bring even more attention to the original version and it will bring a bit more attention to me as an as an director and I also I think we will get some money out of it I, I guess those, those those things probably are the, what we are on the dark side of it Congratulations again on the film. I'm actually uh, describing it as a domestic disaster movie kind of like yeah. Ingmar Bergman meets Irwin Allen <laughs> uh, I, I will use that. I think it's a very good description. Uh, yeah.